What is going on, my lovely friends? Candace B here. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you're flourishing. I hope this has been a great week for you so far. It's a little gloomy outside and you know, we have no makeup on, we got the hood on. It's all just, you know, we just vibing, we just chilling. It's just that type of weather. But you know what? Our souls are sunny and that's all that matters. <laughs> Today, we are gonna be doing some back testing, the first back testing session of 2023. I feel like I have not back tested in front of a camera in so long, so I apologize in advance for just being really rusty and just confused because that's literally what my life is about every single day now. I am just so tired, <laughs> drained because my schedule is so jam-packed, but I'm blessed nonetheless. So yeah, that being said, I just wanted to record a back testing video for you guys, and I'll be using Forex Tester 5, as you can see, and we're gonna be back testing GJ, because although I do wanna trade indices and all that, those beautiful, beautiful instruments, um, for now, as I'm slowly reintegrating myself into trading, I think back testing GJ would make the most sense since I'm mo the most familiar with that instrument. Um, yeah, and just in terms of my schedule and how I plan to approach back testing, like I said, my schedule is a bit kind of jam packed crazy in terms of just the majority of the day being allotted to things. So basically, long story short, I wake up at 5 a.m., 5.20 a.m. in the morning every day. I go to the gym at 6.15 a.m. I'm there for two hours, roughly. Everything's a rough estimate. Um, and then I start work at 9 a.m. That goes to around 5 p.m. And then I have a little bit of, you know, a couple of hours of downtime to obviously, you know, hang out with people, relax, hang out with my family, whatever, do other productive things. And then I go to bed at 10.30 p.m. Yes, I'm a grandma, so what? Okay. I read somewhere that apparently women are supposed to get more sleep than men. So that's my excuse. Okay. I love napping. I love sleeping. Okay. So don't hate on me. But yeah, so I'm just like, okay, how can I integrate my trading into this new schedule, which I'm very grateful for, but how can I make this work? Because usually I'm used to staying up all hours of the night. I'm used to being able to trade London session, especially with GJ. But now it's kind of like, well, your girl got to sleep, like actually sleep. Like I have to be sleeping. So I'm thinking the best thing to do would be just to, you know, look at Asian sessions, set up my trades from there. And then if I see an opportunity in a little slot, like that 8 a.m. slot, I'll execute. If not, then, you know, we move on. But this will probably result in me trading less. And I'm OK with that. Again, I'm just slowly integrating, reintegrating into trading. And I don't want to make the same stupid mistakes I've made in the past. I just want to slowly, I just want to take the slowly, build my account and go from there. You know what I mean? So let's just look at the charts. Let's just see how this will work because all of this is just in theory. I'm just testing it out in front of you guys to see if it will even work and then kind of go from there. So as you can see, I have um, GJ up and I have two charts open more specifically, the M5 and the H1 chart. And I can change these if I want, but for now, I really like these two charts, more of a higher time frame chart in a way I'll probably change the H1 to the H4 maybe I might you know um toggle between the two um, but I do like the M5 just to see the detail um we're going to be back testing February 2022 ish um just because 2022 really wasn't uh, um, an optimal year for trading for me like I didn't really get to trade much um which I'm fine with it's all good so we're going to back test and see what's going on um yeah so right now as we can see it looks like consolidation. If I'm just looking at the H1, it looks like consolidation. But let me just quickly go to the higher time frame because I feel like I haven't done like top down analysis in a long time. What is that? What is that? Um, oh, that's a year. So, oh, that's so cool. It shows like the new year, I think. Oh, Bank Holiday. Never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, so it looks like around this time, the monthly, we were definitely um, bullish but we see these, this top wick. So price essentially had has filled this wick, um, but because it's still, it's like the end of the month at that time, because it's still the end of the month, you know, there's still time for price to either, you know, end up here, um, filling this area here or push down because there is that area of just, you know, 
um, rejection, that resistance area, supply, whatever you want to call it. Um, weekly, seeing the same thing, just a lot of rejection in this area between 158.08 and 156-ish. Daily, just confirming, see more of a double top here. And we just see a lot of wicks. That's what my eye is really catching is just a lot, a lot of wicks. Um, so definitely something to keep in mind because um, when, you know, wicks are happening at zones, especially higher time frame zones, that usually means there's a rejection of some sort um, as opposed to a continuation. But let's go to the H4. We see price is kind of um, just following the confluence of the higher time frames before it and pushing to the downside. We see kind of that um, this high, low, lower high, and essentially maybe a lower low forming. So that's kind of the scope that I have right now. Um, really with all that information, I would assume that bears um, are taking over um, or they're in control right now, but we got to see, and I just want to see essentially if this will work, this method of back testing. So what I think is the best thing to do would be to check the charts around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's uh, I think 6 p.m. ish, if we're not counting daylight savings time. 6 p.m. is when um, London, or sorry, when Asian starts, um, the Tokyo session starts. So um, around 8 p.m. we'll probably see some movement from what I remember in the past. So I'm just gonna mark some vertical lines here just for my own like visual aid. And then um, from there, we would probably be looking um, to see what the market's doing from there. And then 3 a.m. is when London session starts. So we would look for 3 a.m., put a little marking right there. And then from there, um, can I move y'all? And then from there, I would be looking to trade um, so 3 a.m. obviously I'll be sleeping, but I still want to see during my back testing while I'm awake, <laughs> while I back test, I want to see what the market does in that time, in that time. And so let's say, you know, 3, 3 a.m. I'm sleeping and then I wake up, go to the gym and I'm finishing up at the gym and I look at the charts and I see my setup happening. So I want to kind of plan everything out from 8 p.m. and then have kind of both short and long options and then see what happens at 8 a.m. So this will be like a 12 hour process, but it won't be like that, obviously. Um, can we move over y'all? Why are we, can we zoom out and then move this? Bear with me while I set it up. So, and then obviously 12 p.m. is when London session ends. So essentially I still want to trade London session, um, but let's see what happens. Let's see. So first, our first target is 8 p.m. Um, February 20th, 2022. I think that's a Sunday if I, I just checked it real quick. Feb 20, 2022. 022022. Yeah, that's a Sunday. So not expecting too much, um, movement volume, but we'll see. So let's see what happens when we get to 8 PM. I'm just looking on the M5. Woo. All right. So we see that there was some push to the, to the, downside and then con consolidation and then we have a push up so um let's mark this out here and see what that might indicate to us um let's go to our graphic tools and get a rectangular shape so on the h1 we definitely see um that price is at that resistance area and then if we go to the m5 so i love forex for five i like the fact that we can see what's happening um on both when you draw one versus the other. And so, yeah, as you can see on the M5, we are, our tool drew on the side as well. And we see that price did actually push up to that area. Is my camera crooked? I hope not. I'm not gonna change it, I'm sorry. Um, so very interesting point. Okay, so now we know what's happening at 8 p.m. At this point, um, I would wanna look for, if I'm, thinking of what I want to do. And now I'm thinking as I go along, if I go to bed at 1030, it is likely that I could look at the charts until 10. Yeah, like I can, I can definitely look at the charts. Okay, let's add another vertical line, y'all. This is, this is on the fly. <laughs> um, and I don't want to make this video too long just cause it's like literally just, we're just figuring it out. You know, the next backtesting video will be a little bit more structured. 
I hope. Um, <laughs> so right now I'm thinking that if price holds this level, we can take some shorts, but I'm going to just go to 10 PM, um, and see, because of course, if price, if price breaks the level, we can go up. But again, I'm not trading during this time. I'm just kind of mapping out things. So let's see what happens when we get to 10 PM pause. Okay, cool. So we're just hovering. We're just hovering in that area. So let's get out some horizontal lines, shall we? And then we're going to put, um, if I were to take long positions, I would definitely want a clear break of this zone here and a clear break of this consolidation area. Um, so I would probably have my, um, buys just around this area. I just, I just want that space. And if I'm looking for shorts, we definitely want to do. I like this color. I don't really like this color. Okay, guys, we changed it to light coral. Light coral is the color we are going for, for our vertical, for our horizontal lines. <laughs> so uh, if price ends up breaking above this area, once I'm able to take the trade, um, I would be looking for long positions. But on the other side, if I'm looking for shorts, or if I want to see what happens, um, if price pushes down, then I would definitely be looking just to see price cleanly break below this same, the same zone, the same, um, the same area there. So probably under this area where it's under that consolidation, because if price is, it, it's very likely that price can just hover around here. So if it's able to break below it, then there's a higher chance, in my opinion, just from visually looking that we can push down. Um, and then this is all of course from the M5, but if I look at the H1, it looks pretty, pretty good as well. Um, so yeah, let's play this out. Let's see what happens when we get to, um, 3am. That's the next vertical line is 3am. Here it is approaching. Oh my goodness. Oh, we pushed up. So 3am I'm still sleeping. Technically speaking, if I were awake, I might be looking to take long positions at this point because we see price broke above this zone, came back, tested it, pushed up exactly into the area that we were just waiting for it to push into. Um, but now it's, it's looking like it's consolidating, but still hasn't given me any indication that it's going down. There's still more of a chance visually looking just with a naked chart that price is going up and you, that, that it might go up and we have this, you know, a kind of a trend going up. I don't use trend lines, but just to kind of give a visual, we have that upper trend. Um, so let's see what happens. Cause again, I, I'm your girl sleeping. We, I'm snoozing at this time. So let's see what happens now as we move forward. Okay. I'm awake now, but I'm not going to look at the charts. Y'all. I do not want to look at the charts. When I wake up, the first thing I want to do is wake up. Um, this is basically my routine, you know, give thanks to the Lord, get up and then go to the gym. So I don't want to be looking at my phone. Look at the charts like that. We're going to wait till eight. We're getting our good workout in. We pump in. Hey, did I forget to put the 8 a.m.? Y'all, why am I like this? 8 a.m. was when I wanted to look at the trade. I'm so ch uh, guys. See, I'm just crazy. I'm just so silly. 8 a.m. is when I was supposed to look at the trade. I'm like, where is that line? Where's the vertical line? We can't do nothing without the vertical line. Anyways, that I'm sorry, that 8 a.m. vertical line should be there. And I'm sorry if visually this was crazy. Like, I'm really sorry. But essentially, the vertical lines are just showing the times what I'll be looking at the charts. Horizontal lines are just showing where I would buy, where I would sell. OK, uh, so, yeah, technically speaking, this is where I would be looking at the charts now. And at this point, now we're pushing down. So it would be, it would have been a good thing that I didn't take this trade. I'm just going to elongate my zone here because it's still res being res respected. Now, as you can see, price hovered around this area where I would have taken a long position where long positions would have been a bit more realistic for me. And it literally went up, consolidated and pushed down like typical textbook type of movement. And then it started this lower high, lower low structure. So we love that. We love seeing structure and we love that when we use the H1 or the higher time frames as confluence, we see, you know, bearish candles and we see, um, wicks being filled, previous wicks being filled and it's going to push up, touch that zone, push down, close next candle is going to do the same thing wick fill. And, um, yeah, so at this point I would definitely be taking cells 
really I would have gotten in here with this continuation and where would I have taken my take profit since I missed my entry? Let's just say I, I definitely would have wanted to keep my stop loss above um, this area, whatever 1% would calculate to, I would want to keep it well above this zone just to give um, my trade some breathing room because in the past that has not been the case. I have not given my trades too much room to breathe. So that's obviously resulted in a lot of stop losses being hit unnecessarily. So we learning, um, take profit. I would say if I'm looking here, I would just be looking, you know, if we're looking here in this area, I would just be looking to see if price would come back down to this area. Maybe the 156.121 area. Let's see. So technically I would have entered around 156, 331. That's where I had pinpointed. So maybe about a 20 pip move, which is very, very realistic. Let's press play and see what happens guys. Let's see. Oh, oh, there we go. So my take profit would have been hit, um, at, let me get y'all the exact time. Oops. My take profit would have been hit around that 2 PM time on mind you, this is the 21st. Cause the Sunday was the 20th. 21st was the Monday. If I were to trade on Monday, um, this would be where my take when my take profit would have been hit. Um, now you might be thinking, well, Candace, why is your stop loss so big? Why is your take profit so small? Um, good question. Yes. I would still need to make sure my risk reward makes sense. Um, in this case, I'll, I'll do another example because I guess it was hard to visually see it when there was actually, when there was no market order that happened. So yeah, let's, let's just do another example. Cause what am I trying to explain? Really? What were we trying to explain? Let's just delete all of this. Um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna map out new vertical and, and, um, new vertical lines, new horizontal lines, all that good stuff. Um, because we want to make sure we keep our charts clean and we're making sure that we being efficient. So let's see where we're at right now. So we said we're at two, right? We're at 2 PM around that. So let's move forward to. Oh, let's let's map out our vertical lines first, just so we don't miss any pinpoints. So we're waiting till um, sorry about the noise. Who is people are downstairs being loud? My parents, what what are they doing? Throwing boulders. OK, so 10 p.m. is when I would be looking at the charts, assessing things. I'll leave out the 8 p.m. one, but um, then 3 a.m. is when market opens. Can you all scroll? Why? Is this is struggling? So, so 3 a.m. would be when market opens. Mind you, this would be the 22nd of February, which would be from my calculations, the Tuesday. And then we're looking at 8 a.m. for when I would be looking to enter the trade based on what I already mapped out from 10 p.m. And then 12 p.m. is when London session is done. And you might be wondering, well, Candace, why don't you just do pending orders? Why don't you do, you know, sell stops, buy stops, all that good stuff. And honestly, I've never done too well with those. I find that if I just plan on my trade ahead of time and I know exactly which areas I want to ex execute, you know, even setting like um, alerts for myself, I think that would be a bit better than me panicking and like waking up in the middle of the, in, in the middle of the night thinking that like my pending order was was um, was what's the word was activated. So I don't know. Just personally, I don't want to do that right now. Um, who knows what will happen in the future. Let's get to 10 PM. Shall we? Well, we're going too fast. All right. So second example, let's see. Okay. So we're at 10 PM. Now we're looking at the charts. We're trying to figure out what price will want to do. Let's look at the H one because it's giving us a little bit more information personally, in my opinion, I always have to say in my opinion, um, we see that we, we have this zone here where we can trace back for a while and show that's been being respected as a support and now it's broken. So it could be being used as a resistance. Um, it hasn't really specifically come back and really tapped back into this zone to confirm it's as a resistance, but we have hovering, we have a little bit of hovering. So at this point, um, we would be using this zone as kind of that, that area to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? Um, at this point, shorts would still make more sense because if we're looking at the higher timeframes, 
we're still pushing down. And that's as simple as that. We're still bearish. Daily is a bearish candle. Weekly is a bearish candle. H4 is bearish. Why are we going to go against the grain? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Why are we going to go against the grain? So let's just see what happens at this point. I'm wanting to take shorts. And if I'm looking at the M5, it would be more so like under this area, but realistically under this area, probably under this area, we want to make sure we're kind of free from all this stuff, all the, all this gunk. And if we look at the H1, we see that that's a pretty good place. So if it ends up being a, a long position, it is what it is. I don't feel comfortable taking longs right now. I don't feel comfortable. So let's see what happens when we get to 3 a.m. Oops, I meant to move that up. Let's see what happens when we get to 3 a.m. Mind you, I'll, I'll be sleeping, but I just want to see what, what, what are their dishes so loud? Um, 3 a.m. Boom. Boom. Okay. So we're, we're still pushing down. We're getting close to that ideal entry point, but there is some stuff happening here. It looks like price might have a difficult time breaking this, just, um, this area overall might have a different, that is an ugly color. But yeah, price might be, might start to have a difficult time to break this area. So let's see what happens now. We snooze in, we snooze in. Okay, we up now. We're going to the gym, all that good stuff. We're finishing up at the gym. And look at that, price is, whoop, pushed up. Why do I fail at stopping this thing? So price has pushed up back into this zone. So for me, I'm just like, for me, I don't know, because yes, PTSD is still making me feel like PTSD is still making me feel like usually what I would do in this case would was was like would be I, I would take shorts here because it makes sense we're at a zone I would take shorts but I wouldn't have much confirmation like this is consolidation there's no there's no confirmations in consolidation except for the fact that it's consolidation I mean consolidation can confirm a reversal but anyways I would take shorts in this case and then price would just blast through my zone. And then sometimes I would take long positions and price would still push down, continue pushing down. I need to see more information. So in this case, I think I'll just wait. I think I'll just wait to get more confirmation. I think that's the best thing that we can do for ourselves. Okay. I think it's the best thing. Just wait. If we're confused, just wait. And if it ends up happening that there's no trade, it is what it is. Let's see. And we pushed up so at this point we're still it's still during london session taking a long position makes sense here i think taking a long position makes sense if it if it goes against me it is what it is ain't it it is what it is if it goes against me so let's take a long position we got the one percent calculated stop loss whatever so if the system four accessor five is going to calculate my one percent risk based on where i put my stop loss and where i put my take profit so let's map out our stop loss right now. We, oh, hold on. I want to buy. Sorry. We have to make sure we switch that over. So my stop loss, we need to make sure it's under. At this point, I would want my stop loss to be in that area where price was having a hard time breaking. I want it to be below that area. So I would want it to be close to where the entry would have been if I were to short. And then my take profit, um, if we're looking at the H1, probably in this next zone, like the next zone makes sense. Um, mind you, I see this H1 candle, this previous one, it has no top wick. Got to be careful of that. Um, but let's just take, let's just set our take profit for that one. Okay. I'm just going to put it. Hold on. I need to adjust my take profit. I need to adjust my take profit. This is why I love back testing because in this area we can move our stop loss up just to make make the ratio make more sense we can move it up just to make it make more sense and plus for it to still um be okay with structure um yeah i need to see what's going to happen price might push down before it pushes up let's see what happens let's see as long as our our risk is one percent i um yeah. Okay. What the heck? Why isn't it shining? Oh, sorry. So right now it shows that it's a 0 0.05 lot size. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, we're still respecting it. Still respecting it. What are we doing? GJ, you're not showing me good stuff right now. Are we going up or are we going down? At this point, what's going on? At this point, I'm moving my stop loss up because what's really going on, GJ? What, what are we really doing? I need less risk. You bugging right now, OD. OD bugging. Are we pushing up or are we pushing down? We might just spike down then go up. Let's see what happens, knowing my luck. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Just for the sake, boom, we got the buy. Yeah, just for the sake of the video, I just kind of let it continue on. Um, okay, cool, okay, cool. So we got our little, our little percentage, our little, let's see what happened here. Our little take profit we hit, um, very small lot size, but that is what I'm aiming for right now. I don't care how big my account size is, I will take small lots for now until we can build up. You know what I mean? We gonna build up, trust me. Um, but yeah, that was really annoying for GJ to be doing that. Um, yeah, but essentially I'm happy that I waited because regular Candace, back in the day Candace, 2022 Candace would have taken a short from a while ago just because it was in my trading session and I felt the need to trade and I would have been stopped out. So I'm glad that my patience prevailed and we were able to push up and take profit ended up being hit um on the 23rd at 3 a.m so i mean i would have i would have been sleeping again but would i have taken another trade during this time i don't know we still gotta figure out the kinks guys we still gotta figure it out slowly but surely but thank you so much for watching this video i really appreciate it i appreciate you guys stopping by and seeing how i'm trying to figure out how to back test in 2023 you know trying to figure out what works for me and my schedule. So this is just to encourage you guys, no matter how busy you are, no matter how not busy you are, um, just do whatever works for your schedule. It really does not matter what anyone else does or says or how they approach the markets or how they approach anything in their life. Just do what works for you because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you are the one living your life. So why are you gonna worry about what other people are doing? You know what I mean? So we gotta do that and just leave the, the negative criticism to the side, don't care about the haters, the positive criticism, the encouragement, all that good stuff, the positive vibes overall, we welcome all 2023 and beyond, okay? I hope you have an amazing week of trading and just living your life. You woke up today, that in itself is an amazing, amazing accomplishment and blessing, so keep that in mind. And until next video, until the next time I see y'all, have an amazing, beautiful, flourishing, magnificent day, week, and life. Bye!